Today I talk about the possibility that you could actually live forever or bear witness to the extinction of the human race. Strap in. Mark Lott asked, does artificial intelligence really pose an existential threat to humanity? Mark, it's awesome that you asked this because this is the single most important question for the future of humanity. And I mean by far. And nobody's talking about it. So basically there are three different types of artificial intelligence. Artificial narrow intelligence, or ANI. Artificial general intelligence, or AGI. And artificial super intelligence, ASI. An ANI computer can do one specific task really well. And right now, they're all around us. For example, a GPS device can pinpoint your exact location far better than you can. Factory robots can be programmed to build cars faster and more accurately than any human can. Speech-to-text devices can translate human speech into words. Calculators can process numbers way faster, millions times faster than any human can, and web browsers can find information anywhere in the world at any time. And they do these things very, very well. But that's all they can do. And while it may seem that some of our technology has moved beyond this stage, what you're really seeing is just a series of separate ANIs. Take Siri, for example. If you ask Siri if you need to bring an umbrella today, she'll use her speech-to-text ANI to tr translate that into words. Her ANI programming will then take those words, which have been pre-programmed, that tells her to then activate her web browsing ANI to search the weather channel for temperatures. She'll use her GPS ANI to figure out exactly where you are, compare that to what it says online, and then feed that information back to you. Now, all that's impressive, but all she's really doing is just following a pre-programmed set of commands. She doesn't know what you're asking her. Like, she doesn't know that the reason why you're asking is because you don't want to get wet. And for that, you need AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. AGIs are computers that can function exactly at the same level as a human brain, and as it turns out, this is exceedingly difficult to do. Because not to go on a tangent here, but the human brain with its hundred billion neurons and six quadrillion connections is quite literally the single most complex thing we know of in the universe. And what's interesting is while we can program a computer to handle the most unimaginably complex math problems, it has trouble doing the most basic stuff that we don't even have to think about. For example, a computer could easily unravel a series of complex calculus formulas and measurements to calculate the trajectory of comets and asteroids in a solar system. But when shown this picture, it doesn't know whether it's a cat or a dog. That's why captures work, because images that are easy for us to figure out are very hard for a computer. There's just a level of pattern recognition and context and creativity that we just haven't quite reached with computers yet. So, how do we get there? Well, it's not just about adding speed. It also has to get smarter. You can increase the speed of a chimp's brain, but it still wouldn't think like a human. It still lacks the cognitive modules it takes to get there. In fact, there's already a supercomputer in China that surpasses the speed of the human brain, but it takes up vast land and resources, and it still can't tell you why Adam Sandler's funny. So there's a couple of options to get computers to that point. One is just trial and error, and the other is to kind of copy evolution. I mean, it worked with us. If you program a computer to improve itself, it'll prune off the unwelcome scripts, the things that don't work, and it'll heighten and improve on the ones that do work. And over time, meaning thousands of calculations per second, it'll just increase in speed and functionality like an exponential feedback loop. Many computer scientists are already working on this, and it's a consensus among future thinkers and scientists in general that we're going to reach AGI status in 10 to 35 years. And this estimate is partly based on Moore's Law. Moore's Law was created by Gordon E. Moore in 1970, which predicted the computer performance was going to double in power every 18 months. And anything that doubles over and over and over again is exponential growth, which is really important to all this. If you think this pace of progress is not believable, it's because you're thinking linearly and not exponentially. Here's a little bitty to explain exponential growth. If you take a piece of paper, it's only a fraction of a millimeter thick. But if you fold it once, it's now twice as thick. Fold it twice, it's now four times as thick. Fold it three times, eight times as thick. Fold it four times, 16 times as thick, and so on and so on. Try to guess how many folds it would take to reach outer space. 30 folds. That's pretty amazing, right? You know what's even more amazing? The number of folds it would take to get to the moon? 42. It took 30 folds to get 60 miles up into space, but only 12 more folds to get 250,000 miles to the moon. The further you go in exponential growth, the bigger the growth becomes. So if the Earth was ANI and the Moon was AGI, we might just now be getting into space at about 33 folds. But that means that the Moon is only 9 folds away. And according to Moore's Law, that's about 10 years. 
So let's say we get there and we create a computer that's as smart as a human brain, so smart in fact that it can improve itself. Then what happens? Let's keep in mind, if a computer is as smart as we are and it makes itself even smarter, it's now smarter than we are, which means it can improve itself even faster to make it even smarter, which can make it even faster to be even smarter and faster and smarter until it's thinking on a level that we can't even comprehend. And that is artificial superintelligence. And this is where things get really crazy. Because it doesn't have to be that much smarter than us to make a huge difference. In the animal kingdom, chimps are arguably closest to us in intelligence. They're just one step down. But a chimp can't look at a building and realize that somebody made that. It can't look at a work of art and find the metaphor in it. It has no idea that we're traveling around the sun and not the other way around. That same gap would exist between us and an intelligence just one step above us. It could think of things that we can't even conceptualize. It could harness energies and technologies to solve every problem we ever had, provide for every need we could ever have. It would literally be godlike in our eyes. And it could happen fast. Like, really fast. Like, within days of reaching AGI. Because, you know, exponential. In fact, a lot of people think that if we invent artificial superintelligence, it will be the very last thing that we invent. Both for good and for bad. And here's where this ish gets real. Like, really real. Because once we reach ASI, there's only two possible outcomes. Immortality or extinction. If done right, an ASI that's programmed to take care of us and see to our needs could make us immortal. It would cure cancer, it would reverse aging, it could fix any injury by rearranging our molecules at an atomic level. It could create food that was completely waste-free. It could terraform other planets and reverse climate change on our own. We could go on forever. Or, let's say a paperclip company has an A&I machine and its only job is to create more paperclips. It is made specifically to come up with new and better ways to make more paperclips. And somehow, through some fluke, it achieves ASI status. And then it scans the internet and finds out that the entire world is full of stuff that can be mined to make more paperclips. It could mine the entire world. But human beings wouldn't let it do that. So they've got to go. It creates swarms of nanobots that fly around and simultaneously release a toxic gas that kills all the people. Then it mines the entire Earth. When it runs out of that, it sends probes out to asteroids to mine the asteroids. And by the year 3000, the only proof that we ever existed is a series of machines stripping the entire solar system to make curly bits of metal wire. You see, it's not about whether it's a good AI or a bad or an evil AI like you see in the movies. It's just about what was it programmed to do. This event, this moment, where our future diverges into one extreme or the other, is something that many people who are smarter than everybody watching this put together feel quite sure is going to happen, probably in the next hundred years. Ray Kurzweil calls it the singularity. Which one of these two scenarios is more likely to happen is up for debate. And a lot of it. Oxford philosopher Nick Bostrom suggested that extinction is an attractor state that every species eventually goes towards. 99% of every species that has ever lived has gone extinct, and at some point each one of them reached a tipping point that led them down that path. He uses a visual of a balance beam. Each species is walking along a balance beam, and the floor is extinction, and eventually something comes along to knock the species off down to the floor of extinction. Whether it's an asteroid, or climate change, or a more advanced species coming along, or habitat loss. Artificial intelligence might be the tipping point that knocks us off the beam. But some people believe that there is a second attractor state, one that goes the other direction. Immortality. They argue that immortality is something that every species is destined to do once it reaches a certain level of intelligence. We just haven't seen it yet. And they think that ASI could be the tipping point that leads us down that path. One more thing to consider if you think that a super intelligent computer technology that takes care of everything for us would make us lazy and weak, you have to consider that as we merge with technology, ASI could pull us up along with it. We're already merging with technology if you think about it. If you drove to work and got halfway there and realized you left your phone at home, you'd panic. That's merging with technology. A super intelligent machine could manipulate our brains at the molecular level, making us smarter than we ever thought possible. It can maybe even connect us to its own network, giving us vast information about the universe at our fingertips at all times. The history of humanity will someday be gauged by things that happened before and after this event. It is quite literally the single most important thing that will ever happen to the human species. And the most amazing thing is, most of the people watching this video right now are actually going to get to see it. And we only have one shot at it. Godspeed.
I highly encourage all of you to read up on this because not only is it just super crazy and interesting, but it is also the single most important thing that's ever going to happen in our lifetimes. I got most of the information on this from the from an article from a website called Wait But Why. It will take you half a day to read it, but it is incredible. I'll put the links down below. Definitely go check it out. Bring this up at the next social event that you attend or at the water cooler up at work. We need to be talking about this. We need to be able to affect the direction that this thing is going to go. Feel free to pass this video along. And if anything in this video made you want to tell somebody about it, you are in my audience. So please, if this is the first time watching, hit subscribe. I come back with thought-provoking videos every Monday. And finally, what are your thoughts about this? What do you think is going to happen? Do you think we're going to get wiped off the planet? Or do you think that technology has always made our lives better and this is no exception? Alright, thanks again for watching. Love you guys. See you next week.